So listen, we're going to dive into the word real quick. And I want you to find your Bibles and we're going to go to the book of Genesis chapter 2. I got about four verses I want to read to you to help this thing make sense. Once you get to Genesis chapter 2, if you will, just simply shout an old-fashioned amen. 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 So good to see you, Logan. We missed you. Good to see you. Good to see Jayla. Thank God for y'all being here. Genesis chapter 2. Um, all of you being here, we thank God for you. Um, if you got it, just say amen. It reads like this from the New Living Translation family. It says, The Lord God placed the man in the Garden of Eden to tend and watch over it. Verse 16 and 17, but the Lord God warned him, you may eat freely the fruit of every tree in the garden except the tree. Y'all ain't get it. You can eat fruit from every single tree in the whole garden except the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. If you eat this fruit, you are sure to die. Then the Lord God said, one of my favorite scriptures in the whole world, it's not good for the man I got some brother to be alone. What you gonna do, God? I'll make a helper, not a slave. Okay, yeah. I'll make see how the how the ladies respond, fellas. We gotta do better. I'll make a helper who is just right for him. Thank God for the reading of the word, the word of God for the people of God. You'll get that fan right there, Mill. Unplug the fan for. Um, family, we, we're, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna really go ahead and dive into this relationship series entitled Relationship One on One, and we're gonna start today preaching from the subject, the first relationship, the first relationship. Now, what has been interesting to me, Pastor Johnny, is that um, I've been asked the question, Cray, why would you discuss relationships in the church? And although I understand the sentiments of the question, um, there are several reasons why I think it's significant to talk about relationships in the church. Number one is because here at Impact, we teach spiritual life applications. And those are applications that have spiritual undertone, are supported by scripture, but the goal of them are to be relevant and to impact and help us in our day-to-day lives. But the second reason to why I think it's significant to talk about relationships in the church is because the church is no longer the model to the world for relationships. In fact, pop culture and society does not even look to the church for relationship advice anymore. And if Jesus said, according to Matthew in chapter 5, verse 14, that we are to be the light of the world, then that means we are responsible for shining light in darkness in every category of life. But the reason that we cannot shine light in darkness in relationships is because too many relationships in the body of Christ have failed. And because of that, we have a dim light when it comes to relationships in the world. And family, interestingly enough, the church has made relationships a taboo subject. But it's still the top and most discussed subject to society and the world. 
And maybe this will help us that if we talk about just maybe, if we talked a little bit more about relationships in the church, there would not be as many broken relationships at the house. So yes, relationships have a significant place in this sacred place. Relationships are that important. They should be discussed. They should be talked about. They're significant right here in our space, family. And when we think about relationships, I love um, the way the scripture talks about it. That one scripture says, one of my favorite scriptures, 1 John chapter 4, verse 20, it says, And how can you say that you love God? who you cannot see, but not love your brother and sister who you see. And if I could just crayonize that for a moment, how can you say you're in relationship with God, but not be in relationship with people that you see every day? So there's an important place for relationships and family. We're going to dive into this series and including today, we'll spend five more weeks talking in the church about relationships and today I want to address the first relationship when we look at the book of Genesis Genesis um, is called the book of beginnings quite obvious and clearly Abraham because it's the very first book of our Bibles Genesis the book of beginnings and when it comes to the authorship it's believed um, that the authorship that Genesis is included in the Mosaic authorship, which simply means that scholars believed that God gave Moses the revelation for the first five books of the Bible, which is also known note takers as the Torah is believed that God gave Moses this revelation and Moses came back and wrote these first five books. So Moses, in simple terms, is the author, Minister Cowan, of the book of Genesis. And when we get to Genesis chapter 2, where we're going to work from today and talk about the first relationship, when we look at Genesis chapter 2, Moses, if he is the writer, has already given us a large portion of information. He's already revealed to us in the previous chapter, in chapter number 1, he's revealed to us that it was God who was the creator of the heavens and the earth. He reveals to us that it was God who looked into the emptiness and the nothingness of the world and hit the light switch and there was light. He says that it was God who created the mountains and created um, the earth and created and separated the skies from the earth and it was God who created all seed bearing plants. He said it was God that created the bodies of water so the ocean, the lake, the river, the pond, even the blue lagoon and lumber city God created it it was God that created all these things and then on the sixth day God created man and woman watch this in their image which lets us know that even before we thought about relationships somewhere there was relationship many believe that in the beginning was the word that's a preachy verse right there and the word was with God and the word was God there was relationship to why God said I create man and woman in our image and our likeness and then for all the married people those that will be married this should become one of your favorite verses after man was created chapter 1 of Genesis verse 28 says and God told them be fruitful and multiply but I really like, right, there is a married woman right there. Shout about it. Don't be shamed. I really like the way the Eugene Peterson message translation brings out verse 28 in chapter 1. It says this, that you are to, listen, prosper, reproduce, fill the earth, and take charge. I'm going to teach this thing today more than shout. Catch this. The Eugene Peterson message translation, Daniel, tells us from God the first commands when you enter relationship. The commands when you enter relationship, watch it, are to prosper, reproduce, fill the earth, and take charge. In simpler terms, let me bring it home. When man and woman enter relationship, the first commandments that God give you are to attain prosperity, make babies, and practice making babies, and then tell the earth what to do. 
Okay, y'all acting bougie with me. Let me run it back. God said, not me, but God gives us the first commands when you enter a relationship. Do these three things. Attain prosperity. Make sure that you make babies and practice making babies. And then make sure you tell the earth what to do. And here's the problem that I have. Why is it? That in the church, the first commands that God gives us are the ones that we demonize the most. Prosperity, sex, and taking control of what God told us to. And two of those three that I just mentioned are the reason why many romantic relationships end. No money it is. No good love making it is. Two of those are demonized by the church, but they are the early commandments that God gave us. God says when you enter man and woman into relationship, here's what you do. Attain your prosperity. Make sure you make babies and reproduce and tell the earth what to do. In other words, speak authority into the earth. And those are the things that we demonize the most. And maybe that's why, Logan, relationships in the body of Christ are failing because we got broke relationships, no love making, and people with no authority. But you can shout, you can speak in tongues, but you ain't going home and pleasing your husband or your wife. You ain't got no money in your bank account because you keep telling us, don't talk about prosperity. No, God is prosperity. And his first commandment is when you enter a relationship to prosper. And I'm telling y'all right now, I refuse to be a broke husband. I refuse to be a broke pastor. I refuse to be a broke leader. Especially when God told me that God owns the cattle on a thousand hills. And that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. God says, prosper, make babies, and tell the earth what to do. You got to grow. You got to reproduce. You got to produce. You got to speak authority. But the church has demonized those very three things. Family, Moses walks us into Genesis chapter 2. And when he gets us into Genesis chapter 2, the man, he says, is created, verse 7, from the dust or the dirt of the ground. And when God creates the man, Millie, Moses says that God revealed to him that God blew his breath, the breath of life into the man, and the man became a living being. God took dirt from the ground, molded it, blew God's breath into it, which is the breath of life, and the dirt started living. And with that family, when God blew his breath into the dirt, it establishes the first relationship. The first relationship, family, is between you and God. You cannot have effective relationship with others if you don't cultivate relationship with God. And there's too many people that try to establish other relationships when they don't have relationship with God. And I can promise you this, every time you try to engage in platonic relationship, romantic relationship, professional relationship, job relationship, business relationships, if you do it without relationship with God, it will not be effective because you first got to cultivate and establish the relationship with God why because the first relationship is between you and God y'all don't crucify me right here but know this that God didn't create us for relationship with God I'm glad it got quiet God created us with relationship with God Meaning that God was not sitting in heaven bored and said, let me find something to be in relationship with and just said, let me create them for a relationship. God created you already with relationship. So when you come into the world, you're already in relationship with God. The problem is too many of us backpedal out of the relationship to why we have to get back into the relationship. See, you... 
See, the problem is there's too many people that think God created them for a relationship and that's why they got their nose up in the air and that's why they don't praise when they come in here because they think they're doing God a favor. No, God created you with relationship so we're doing God a favor by paying him back what he gave us when he breathed his breath into us. You were not created for God's pleasure and for God just to have relationship. God gave you a different purpose but God created you with relationship. Let me show you because I know y'all y'all looking at me. Uh, let, let, let me show you real quick what this looks like. God didn't create you for relationship. I'm going to show you how God showed me that God created you. God had a, t a table in heaven. And uh, God had structures. And uh, God had a man, male, and God was going to have a female structure. Some of y'all already missed the revelation. They're exactly equal. Okay. Yeah. I, I, came, to, I came to have a good time preaching today, but y'all ain't catching it. If you, if, you ever, if you ever, fellas, get in a situation and you think this one ain't equal to this one, then you already got a problem in a relationship or never established. And there's too many men in the world that think because they got muscles that their, that their figure is better than this figure. But the reality is that they were created equal. Okay, all right. Um, and, and, and so when God decided to create a man and woman, the Bible says that God took dirt from the ground. This is, this is real dirt, Abraham, that I went and dug up myself with my own hands. This is dirt. God took dirt. Watch this. And establish the relationship. Why, why would he do that? God took, don't miss this, what he created to be the foundation of who you are. Okay. So the dirt is the foundation of who you are. In other words, the dirt is the relationship that you have not for God, but with God. And if you do not have dirt, you are not of God. So then God decided that the next thing I'll do is I'll take attributes. So for the lady, I had to create you with a foundation of dirt, but then I add some attributes. So there's a little green attribute, so that may mean you're 4'11". But that's your attribute. Right? Th th then God is going to put some melon, I mean, God is going to add some. So now God may add a couple more attributes. But, but then, um, fellas, um, God, watch this, Adam was made with red dirt. In fact, the name Adam means red man. Um, so what God will do for the fellas is God will come back and add attributes. So you might be 5'10", light skin, really handsome, beard, and add attributes. Um, and then... I, I, can't, I, can't, I can't say that God add melanin without adding a little white sand. Because uh, Danielle go to our church and a couple of So Jessica go to our church. So it can't be all melanin, black folks. See how y'all looking? Y'all mad now. It, it, we ain't. So God added a little flavor. A little flavor. But the point that I want you to see is that everything is still sitting on top of the dirt that God created in you. So no matter how much you take supremacy in your white coloring, no matter how much you take supremacy in your melanin coloring, it does not overtake the fact that both of you were made with dirt at the bottom. And you know what's wrong with America right now? Is that we got people that see their attribute as more valuable than the dirt. When the dirt is really what's valuable, because God can snatch the attribute, God can take the height, God can take the melanin, God can take the white coloring, but the dirt is 
is still there. Why? Because God first established relationship with you based off of what God made. So here's what I want to shout about. No matter how tough it gets, no matter how hard it feels, you still have what God made inside of you. So God did not... Don't let your mind and the enemy try to trick you to make you think that you're so great that God created you for relationship. God created you with relationship. You came into the world in your first relationship with God. It says, verse chapter 2, verse 7, God blew his breath into the dirt, Vanessa, and the dirt started living which establishes the first relationship and family from the establishment of the relationship our responsibility is to cultivate the first relationship with God and in cultivating the relationship with God there are several benefits that come from the relationship that I want to talk to you about the first benefit that comes from the relationship that you cultivate with God is that watch this God will provide us a place verse 15 of chapter 2 watch this I love it God created the man and what did God do he placed him in the garden metaphorically for us when God placed Adam in the garden it speaks to areas in your life where God has placed you so so come on Craig so where you are right now you're there because God placed you there okay watch this and God can only place you in places based off of your relationship with God so some of us can't go to certain places because we have not cultivated the relationship enough so God will keep you in the same place and you'll start feeling stagnant you'll start feeling like you're not growing you'll start feeling like the relationship is failing it's only because God can place you in places based on the relationship with God and some of us have not established our relationship and cultivated our first relationship so you wonder why you're in the same place God, watch this, God could only put Adam in the garden because God trusted Adam in the garden. God placed him in the garden. The first benefit of the relationship is God will provide you a place. And this blessed me, family. The place can also be symbolic to your covering. It's not by chance that you joined Impact, and it's not by chance that you're at Impact. God, I didn't put you here. God placed you in Impact. Okay. This this, this blessed me right here. Note this. Um, God, in verse 8, created the garden. Y'all got me? And then God, after creating the garden, came back in verse 15 and placed Adam there. Here it is. This for you, Logan. If they don't give you a platform, God will create you one. (laughs) Adam didn't need nothing else. He just needed God to make the garden. Man didn't make it, so man can't take it away. Man didn't influence it, so man can't snatch it away. When they won't give you your platform, trust in God to make your garden and place you in the garden. The, the, the first benefit of the first relationship is God will provide you a place. The second benefit is this. Watch this. God will provide don't miss this purpose let me let me me help y'all real quick let me show you what the verse says i'm gonna kill here's what the verse says the verse says and god placed adam in the garden to do what to tend and look over the garden but y'all don't miss this write this write write this translation down it's the ylt translation it's called the Young Literal Translation of 1898. I love the way it translates this. It says that God placed Adam in the garden, watch this, to serve it and keep it. 
God will never put you in a place that God did not intend, Savannah, for you to serve and to keep. And you know another reason why some of us can't get to places we desire? You ain't got no service. God can't trust you to keep nothing. God can't trust you to overwatch it. Too many people are inconsistent, so God can't put you in places you desire because you won't serve it, you won't keep it. You will walk in there thinking that you're better than everybody and you need to be promoted and you ain't putting no work in. Uh, you got to go back, grab a broom, learn how to serve. You got to go get the mop, learn how to serve. You got to go get the spray and learn how to serve. This helps you build not just relationship with God, but relationship with others because if you can't serve God, you certainly can't serve nobody else. So the benefit is this God will give you purpose Watch this now Walk slow cray God says Adam I'm placing you In impact To serve it And to keep it To tend it and to watch over it Those are tasks But the task Turn into purpose Don't miss this I was studying Adam, and I'm trying to figure out, so many people, Jessica, in the world are looking for their global purpose. Think about this. God, tell me what my purpose is. What am I supposed to do with my life? God, what? And I was, I was studying Adam, and it, it, started, it started getting me. All God told Adam to do, be fruitful and multiply, that starts at home. Okay, y'all, the married people ain't ready for me, man. Y'all are not ready for this series. The be fruitful and multiply, that starts at the crib. That's in community. Then God says, I'm going to place you in this particular community. I'm going to place you right here in the garden. And all I want you to do is tend to it and watch over it. God didn't give Adam a global purpose. He gave him a purpose for where he was at. Abraham had global purpose. You will be a father of many nations. But Adam's purpose was right where he was at. And too many of us are looking for great purpose when the purpose is based on the place where you are. God said, I put you on this job. There's a purpose to why you're here. So serve it and look over it. I put you in this place at this church and this ministry. I put you there to serve it and look over it. There's too many people that's bypassing where God placed them because they want to be on national TV. Everybody didn't get the call that Abraham got. But you got to be able to celebrate God and thank God for giving you the Adam call that you got. God, I may never be on TV. I may never have a million followers. But I thank you for the 65 that come and support and push the ministry. And watch what we do with 65. Because my calling may not be global, but my purpose may be in the community. And guess what? We never forget Abraham's name, but we never forget Adam's either. So, so sometimes God will reveal that your purpose ain't global. Your purpose is to the place where you're called. The second benefit is um, God provides purpose. God tells, he says, what I want you to do when I place you in this garden is tend to it, serve it, keep it, and watch over it. And then God provides, based off the relationship, provision. Let, let, me, let me help y'all. On The verse says... This bless me. Don't read too fast because you got to read 16 before you go to 17. 17 starts with the word except. But 16 says this. And you can eat from every tree in the garden. And it stops. Okay. See, we read too fast. Because we jump to 17 because we already know what it's going to say. And 17 says except. But 16 says and you can eat the fruit of every tree in the garden which means Adam Adam lets in the room God has already provided for you to eat from every single tree that you need to eat from watch this based on your relationship so, so th this got me right here because we've been talking about gathering season right let me help y'all Adam didn't plant no seeds uh, the garden was already created by God Watch this. 
with harvest already. So based on Adam's relationship with God, God had already provided a garden that had every fruit that he can eat from it right there in the garden and he never planted one seed. So just imagine impacting all the gatherers that are watching us live. If Adam got a garden without planting seed, what will God do for you when you already planted your seed? I got seed in the ground, and if God, if you will do it for Adam, then I know that you're going to do it for me, because I've been planting seed since May of this year, and that's a couple months ago, so I know when I walk into my garden, it's going to have fruit everywhere, it's going to have fruit over here, why? Because the benefit of your relationship with God is that God will provide all of your needs according to his riches and glory, he'll supply the garden. Don't miss it though. Based on relationship. Because see, here's the, here's the problem, Pastor Johnny. It's too many folk planting seed ain't got no relationship. So, yeah. so, so, so basically what you're doing is you're storing up harvest for me. Because the Bible says, and the wealth of the wicked is laid up in store for the righteous. So if you ain't got relationship but you plant seed, I'll take it, I'll take it, I'll take it. And see, that... That's what bothers me with church folk. You got to be okay with the fact God said it, I ain't said it. And if the wicked want to sow seed, sow seed, and we going to eat from the harvest. Because you can't be trying to plant in God's garden without relationship. The benefit of the relationship is thoroughly God will provide provision. But fourthly, family, don't miss it. The benefit of relationship with God the first relationship is that God also provides restrictions verse 17 says except the tree of good and knowledge you can eat the fruit from every tree in the garden verse 17 except this one God has to establish restrictions and limitations why Cray? not because God wants to hurt us but to keep us from hurting ourselves right, watch this what restrictions and limitations eventually become are standards and when there are no restrictions or limitations People don't have standards. Okay, make it make sense. So, when you cheat on somebody in relationship, that suggests strongly that you have no standards because you bypass the limitations and restrictions. And there's a lot of people in relationship that have no standards. When you have restrictions and limitations it creates for us standards and all of us entering relationships should have standards but here's the problem Nikki Perry there's too many people in the body of Christ that don't have standards when it comes to God listen to me if you cheat on God ain't no way you can be faithful to me if you run around on God, there's no way you won't run around on me. If you're not loyal to God, you certainly cannot be loyal to me. And there's too many of us that allow people that have no relationship with God to try to establish relationship with us. And we wonder why we keep getting hurt when God tried to put a restriction on that relationship when he gave you standards. See, I'm a man and I'm going to talk about it real quick. Um, a lot of times you can tell what a brother wants in relationship based on how he responds to your standards okay maybe on Facebook live they with me uh, see cause, cause how we do um, fellas I'm sorry I'm gonna release this one then I'm gonna keep the rest of our stuff secret but how we do is when when we don't want to abide by your standard we make you think the standard is too high okay so what typically happens um, is the lady because she's she's moved by the intellect or she's moved by the appearance or she's moved by the bank account she'll lower her standard 
and remove her limitations and her restrictions. So now she won't save herself to marriage. She'll give it up to you because she's lower her standard and remove her restrictions. So what does God do? God puts restrictions in place, no sex before marriage, to protect you. Okay, y'all got real quiet. See, see how that is? The, the standard is to guard you because God don't want you to get hurt. It's not that God is trying to hurt us. It's not all what we say about the old church. Oh, they had too many rules and they had too many regulations. Well, thank God they did. Maybe that's why more people live their life a little bit better because they had standards, because they had righteousness, because they said that righteousness was right. We're the church of today that say, nah. Them, them standards was, watch this, when you don't want to live by them, we say they were too high. And now you got more folk hurting in the church than any generation previous because my arm, we've dropped the restrictions and limitations and we have no standards. So now anything can come up in your church doing anything, wearing anything, acting any kind of way, and you ain't going to say nothing. You're going to turn your head and say, oh, we love them, we love them, we love them, but we don't give them no standard. But impact, can I just talk to y'all for a minute? If we're going to establish real relationship with God, then we got to start setting some standards in the house. You, you can't just do any and everything that you want to. You can't just walk on the ground and be cussing and walking around. Now, if you cuss again, I'm going to have to just have a conversation with you. I'm not trying to be mean, but go across the street and curse. Get, there was a day when we respected the church ground so much because there was a standard. And you believe that if you walk by the church and thought about a curse word, that God will come down and strike you. But now we have lowered God's standard. And John and Marie, we lowered the standard because we don't have the same relationship with God. We're trying to get relationship horizontally instead of getting it vertically. Here, here. So the fourth benefit is that God will provide restrictions. And here's the fifth and final benefit, and we're out of here. When you establish and cultivate relationship with God, God will then provide relationship with the people. Okay. Here's what the verse says. It says, and God looked at my boy Adam and James Earl Cray. And he said, it is not good for that man, here it is, all her man, to be alone. Isn't it interesting that the last part of the benefit of relationship with God is relationship with people? Why is it that we try to do it backwards? So, he, he, he ain't been to church in 15 years, but, um, uh, you know, God will work it out and um, God, we'll, we'll start backwards, God. We'll, we'll, I'll start with a relationship with people first, and then we'll try to work our way back to you. Oh, she, she, she don't go to church. Well, I'm a preacher, so she ain't, ain't got to go to church all the time. I don't want nobody to go to church. I'm just telling her myself. You, you know, she ain't got to go to church all the time. I don't want nobody to go to church all the time. So you try to establish relationship with people first when God has set that benefit as the last one. It's the fifth and last benefit to your relationship with God is when you get in a relationship with people because God wants to make sure you got a place. Okay, you got a purpose. Let me pause. Too many of us date people with no purpose. So God wants to make sure um, that, that, you, that you got a place. You got a purpose. Come here, sisters. You got provision. You got restrictions. And then I'll bring the person. So, so don't you get so sad when it seems like relationships are coming your way and you're talking about, well, everybody holler at my homegirl, but don't nobody ever try to holler at me. Good. That's God putting you in position so you don't have to worry about all the other stuff. While folk are trying to do it backwards, you'll do it the right way. And while they're getting divorced in six months, you'll be celebrating six years. You got to make sure that God aligns it, that you have everything you need, the place, the purpose, the provision, the restrictions, and then the person. I'm done with this one. So we said that God's benefit, the fifth one, is the people, right? According to numerology, 
The number five is the number of grace. God, what are you saying to us right now? You good with the place. You going to be even better with the purpose. The provision going to make you shout. The restriction is going to get you in line. But you're going to need grace for the person. Uh, okay. See, God knows that even, no matter how great the relationship is going to be, no matter how much you love them and they love you, you're going to need some grace for them every now and again. Ain't that right, Joyce Cowan? I can't love you every single day the same way because you're going to make me mad. You ain't going to let the toilet seat down. You're going to put too much toilet paper in the bathroom. I'm tired of watching you wipe off the counter when I get it. I'm going to come back and clean it up. But you're going to need some grace for the person. So for anybody that's sitting here that plans on getting married, that plans on having in-depth, intimate friendships, if you think for one minute that you're going to feel the same way every single day, then you don't understand people, you don't understand the person, you got to know that fifth, you're going to need some grace for the person. And if any of y'all, I'm done, if any of y'all are like me, they're going to need some grace for me too. Family, five, five benefits to the first relationship is God will provide a place, God will provide purpose, God will provide provision, God will provide restrictions, and then God will provide the people. Don't try to build intimate relationships, whether that's platonic, romantic, professionally, don't try to build relationships with not, without having the first four things in order. The body of Christ has to once again become the standard and the model for relationships. Notice, folk don't come get Christian gospel counseling anymore before marriage. They go log into the counseling center. Well, folk ain't giving them no scripture support. Because we have not shown them the model. Either we rush too quickly because we're on Paul's doctrine, it's better to marry than to burn. Do that if you want to, see how long that lasts. Or, or we, 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 we're lonely and then we rush to the person first. And family, for the next four weeks after this week, we're going to dive into what relationships look like. And they all are the same romantically platonically and professionally. These relationships are similar. They have the same foundations. God. I'm done. Everyone standing. Everyone standing. Everyone standing. 